The Yellowstone supervolcano is a large, active volcanic system located primarily in the northwest corner of Wyoming, in the United States. It's considered to be one of the largest and most dangerous volcanoes on Earth, with the ability to produce catastrophic eruptions that could affect the entire planet. The Yellowstone supervolcano has been given this name because it's a type of volcano known as a supervolcano, which is defined as a volcano capable of producing an eruption with a volume of more than 1,000 cubic kilometers. The Yellowstone supervolcano has erupted several times in the past, with the most recent eruption occurring about 640,000 years ago. The most significant eruption occurred about 2.1 million years ago, producing an ashfall that covered much of the western United States. The Yellowstone supervolcano is monitored closely by scientists, who use a variety of techniques to detect changes in the volcano's behavior. This monitoring includes measuring ground deformation, monitoring earthquake activity, and studying gas emissions. Rather worryingly, just recently, Russian officials have come forward and said that they have the ability to make Yellowstone erupt. This was recently announced on a television station, where they said that a Satan II nuke would be able to achieve this. One military commentator said that this new missile that has been developed is a special one, and that it has the ability to deliver a large number of nuclear warheads at once. The military official said the following, It's impossible to build an all-looking defense system, which means that the United States is vulnerable. That is the first point. And the second point is that the Sarmat poses a threat to the most feared facility on United States territory, the Yellowstone Volcano. End quote. They carried on by saying that if they were to do this, it would bring America to its knees, and said that United States officials should be careful what they say. The United States Geological Society has come forward and said that this would not be possible, and pointed out that the supervolcano located under Yellowstone cannot be set off in this manner. Military commentators have said this comment may have been made due to the fact that President Biden visited the Ukrainian capital. As some have pointed out, though, Regardless of whether or not the supervolcano would erupt, there's still people living in this area, and an attack of this type would have a direct effect on them. According to the home statistics, there's currently over 1,000 people living directly inside Yellowstone National Park, with other residents living just outside of the park. Military insiders have said that this isn't a good sign, and that as of right now the relationship between the United States and Russia is not good, saying that it's the worst that it's been in years. Launching a missile of any kind is always going to have disastrous effects. All we can do right now is hope that it doesn't reach this point. One of the greatest fears of the modern era, due to its potential to cause an apocalyptic scenario never seen before, is that of the eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano. Though many might not be aware of its dangers, it appears to pose one of the greatest realistic chances of wiping out the majority of life on Earth and possibly lead to the extinction of the human race. Referred to by scientists as a catastrophic super-eruption, the force and material that would be ejected from the massive Yellowstone supervolcano would be among one of the largest explosions to ever be recorded on the face of the Earth. When looking at estimated comparisons of this pressure and ejection of magma compared to that of the Mount St. Helens explosion, of which was claimed to be equivalent to the blasting force of 1,600 times the size of the atomic weapon dropped on the Japanese city of Hiroshima, it appears that the eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano would be roughly 10,000 times larger in estimated cubic kilometers than that of the eruption at Mount St. Helens. What this essentially translates to would be the immediate ejection of more than 2,500 cubic kilometers of ash, magma and materials, a size much larger than that of the 0.25 cubic kilometers ejected after the Mount St. Helens eruption. Though the supervolcano isn't expected to cause a massive upheaval of land, this large amount of pressure being released will still cause a blast wave that can cause damage out past the states of Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana. Additionally, the Yellowstone supervolcano lies close to a number of sensitive fault lines all across the west coast. It's believed that this massive amount of pressure released in one moment, coupled with the massive amount of force generated via the super eruption, will create a domino effect of seismic activity that could lead to fault lines completely sliding in opposite directions causing a number of massive earthquakes all across the west coast. The earthquakes would be some of the largest ever to have been recorded and would only lead to further damage of roads, highways, cities and nearby constructions, completely blocking off those affected from reaching the help they would need. 
The eruption of the massive Yellowstone supervolcano will do much more than just emit a large amount of materials from the volcano itself. It's predicted that the massive amount of force and pressure released by the volcano will trigger other pockets of magma to release nearby in quick-forming shafts that will grow in size throughout the volcano's eruption. Though scientists are aware of the fact that the eruption of a volcano cannot trigger the eruption of nearby volcanoes in the event of a supervolcano and its eruption, the incredibly large amount of forces and material buildup will lead to a pocket of nearby magma vents to form, creating a number of normal volcanic entities that will also spew out a large amount of volcanic materials. Though, technically speaking, the Yellowstone supervolcano is not triggering other dormant volcanoes, it will continue to form these vents, which will grow in size, and will appear to be similar to that of smaller volcanoes having formed. It's also believed that with a large enough tectonic plate shift, caused by the overwhelming seismic activity that will be caused by the forces of eruption behind the supervolcano, a number of large events could form along the ridges of the shifting tectonic plates. If these plates shift enough, not only would there be a number of massive earthquakes, but there could be a number of newly formed volcanic entities all along the entire west coast. In essence, this means that the eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano would lead to a number of following eruptions, newly formed magma vents, and a domino effect of seismic activity that could cause the formation of new active volcanoes all along the entirety of the west coast of the United States, of which will only exacerbate the issues that spawn from ejected material, damage, and spewing ash. Research has found that after the eruption of a supervolcano, it has often been recorded that there tends to be a massive cooling event that occurs around the world. This is due to the fact that the ejection of a large amount of volcanic ash causes a global darkness event, preventing the planet from sufficiently warming up and causing a global ice age. This appears to also have been the case a mere 100,000 years ago, when the Toba supereruption occurred and nearly drove humanity to extinction. Prior to this event, there was an estimated 1 million human population. After the event took place, there were only 11,000 humans left, of which caused a massive bottleneck effect that allows us to see the time in which such an event took place. Additionally, this rapid death count occurred when the Toba super eruption caused a global blackout that lasted for more than 10 years. During this time, a massive ice age occurred and an atmospheric cooling event that lasted for another 1,000 years. Given these calculations, it's expected that if the Yellowstone supervolcano were to erupt in the modern day, the amount of ash spewed would travel through the atmosphere and block out the sun from all around the world, leading to a modern-day ice age that would prevent the sun from being seen for six to seven years in total, creating a seemingly endless darkness for all life on Earth and record low temperatures never before recorded. One of the main problems with the global cooling event is not that of the drop in temperatures all across the world, but rather that of its effect on crops on a massive global scale. With this expected worldwide blackout, researchers believe that, for more than six to seven years, it will be impossible for farmers around the world to grow any kind of produce or grain. This also means that it will also be impossible for farmers to take care of livestock of any kind. Considering the fact that agriculture is the lowest rung on the ladder of economic scale, this would lead to disastrous effects on industry, development, construction efforts, feeding citizens, and the global economy. Essentially, there would be mass starvation all across the world as people raid grocery stores for the last remaining food in the world. Additionally, the blackout will lead to a number of wildlife populations immediately dying out as their habitats become destroyed, meaning that hunting and foraging will become impossible to sustain. Even a number of off-grid living situations would be disastrously affected, as the majority of doomsday preppers living on homesteads rely on local agriculture, solar panels for power, along with a number of other supplies that require their local habitats remaining intact. With these changes, the blackout will reach everywhere around the world, making no place safe enough to withstand such changes. Not only will this lead to riots within the short term, but it will overwhelmingly lead to the shutdown of government, civilization, and order itself. As mass starvation circles the globe, the human population will be expected to drop by an expected 95% as the most developed countries will be affected the worst and the least developed countries will adapt the fastest. A lack of crops from around the world, the breakdown of infrastructure, inability to travel across damaged roads throughout the United States, 
as well as the complete six to seven year darkness that would follow the eruption, means that, at the end of these initial damages, the entire world would begin to enter a stage of total economic shutdown. This will first begin at the center of damaged cities and the inability for governments from around the world to offer aid of any kind. As the volcanic ash spreads and brings darkness around the world, it will only take three days before all of the grocery stores run empty, as the shipping trucks fail to deliver necessary goods. After this occurs, raiding of supplies will quickly begin, as the needs of the people from around the world and starvation would begin. This panic will cause the total breakdown of all law and authority, as people center around their individual needs. The inability would then quickly follow farmers being unable to grow and harvest crops, along with many crops from around the world immediately dying out. The only chance one would have at outlasting such an event would require them to have created an underground facility, of which wouldn't be affected to the large amount of falling ash, the threatening panic of other people fighting for resources, as well as the storage of enough food, water and supplies to last for seven years. Considering such a safe room does not exist for most, of which even most doomsday preppers only store enough food for six months to a year, outlasting such an event will prove to be impossible. Not only does this risk the extinction of all of human life on our planet, but we would see a global cooling event and an ice age lasting another 1,000 years following the six to seven year darkness. So to summarize, if the Yellowstone supervolcano were to erupt, it would have catastrophic and far-reaching effects. The immediate impact of the eruption would be devastating to the surrounding area, with a massive explosion producing a high-velocity ash cloud that could reach several miles into the atmosphere. The ash fall would be widespread, potentially covering much of the western United States and affecting air travel, agriculture and infrastructure. The surrounding areas would be subjected to a rain of ash and rock fragments, which would cause significant damage to buildings, vehicles and other structures. In addition to the immediate effects, the eruption could have long-term impacts on the global climate. The ash and gases released by the eruption would be carried by winds around the world, potentially causing a volcanic winter that could last for several years. This could have a significant impact on global agriculture and could cause widespread famine. Overall, the eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano would be a catastrophic event with far-reaching and long-lasting effects. While the probability of such an event occurring in the near future is considered low, ongoing monitoring and research are essential to ensure that the risk is minimized as much as possible. So, what do you make of these recent Yellowstone supervolcano announcements? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.